Hello and welcome. My name is Arjun and I am telling you about my recently published blog Human Motion Recognition Using Smartphones and Smartwatches. I have always doubted like smartphones, smartwatches or a spend how they recognize what you are doing currently, whether you are walking, running or relaxing and the amount of calories that you are burning or the amount of hours you are sleeping, how it is possible by these devices like how they are tracking. So I recently came across with a data set of UCI, HAI, Human Activity Recognition and thanks to them, they have collected the data from various age groups from 19 to 48 years and the data set is, contains uh, the data about the walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs, sitting, standing or laying. It contains 561 features and it was measured from the 30 subjects. The purpose of this project that I had uh, created is just to segregate the data between the active and inactive position. So, I know that walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs are all part of activity, some kind of activity, whereas the sitting, sitting, uh, uh, standing or laying are part of inactive or no motion. So, I had created two different data frames, active data frame and inactive data frame. So, first of all, I investigate the data. What I had seen is that I plotted the line graph of the first three features between the activity and no activity data frame. So, as you can see that the intensity on my right is quite more as compared to the left it is because this data is belongs to the activity data frame and my, and my left this belongs to the no activity data frame. So I randomly plotted some of the features and I want to visualize like how they are uh, behaving. I plotted the heat map uh, for all the features while what I had done is that I find the minimum of each features and the maximum of the each feature and I plotted them and what I found is that the minimum for the each features uh, that counts to be 500 while the maximum for features counts to be 500 so my like overall data is well balanced and they are now and also I, have, I need to mention this one thing that the data that I'm getting is already normalized and the data doesn't contain any null values or any nine values is the range of values of each feature equally distributed so I randomly selected some of the features and plotted and I wanted to know the the range the count of each feature between the value between values from minus one to one. It's a data well behaved. So as I told you that I had I had made two data frames out of the one original data frame that is activity and no activity. So on my left there is a data frame of activity and no activity and on my right the this is a data frame, original data data frame. So on my left it contains only two labels that is activity and no activity. While on my right it contains six features, uh, namely like walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs, sitting, playing, or standing. So I applied some of the classification techniques that are most popular for this configuration, named by classifier, nearest neighbor, support vector machine, decision tree, boosted tree, random forest, perceptron, neural network. So I have implemented all these methods and the most accurate method that I got is with the neural network. The accuracy was 98.61% and let me mention also that the accuracy that I am getting is on the original data set but when I convert it from 6 labels to 2 labels under category activity and no activity then the accuracy with the neural network I got is 99.9%. So here is my Google Collab code. I first imported this, this data set from the link provided and then I had done this. Then I read the data like there were files in the test folder, x test that is your features, features test values and the y test that is your target values. And similarly in the training folder I have x train and the y train. I just read uh, the CSV and load it that in, in the variable x and y -train. Then this is how my x looks, it's just an overview and this is how my y looks, it's just an overview. So I just visualize the heat map generated on the features or the x -train. Then I created the created the x dot minimum and x dot maximum histogram plot. I find that the minimum of all the features presented 
has a count of around 500 whereas the maximum has a count of 500 also so my data is well balanced and normalized now i selected randomly and plotted just some graph to analyze their range so i plotted the 3d plot also between no activity and activity data frames then I had also done the smoothing of the data I am taking the mean of the first three or I am taking the mean of the three values and replacing with the third value so my data frame now starts from the third value because uh, the first first two doesn't have the previous three values and what helps uh, the smoothing, smoothing of data it like it decreases the noise of the sensor and it helps us to visualize the data more accurately now I had a comparison between no activity and activity data frame and these are the range of activity and no activity data frame and this is the range of the normal data frame so my overall data set is almost equally distributed so I plotted randomly 12 features and their range to see if they are equally distributed now this is the classification that I had done on the I had done on linear classification here's neighbor, support vector machine, decision trees, boosted trees, random forest, perceptron and neural network so in logistic regression my overall weighted average accuracy was about 96% and my base my accuracy was 75.03 and this is the lowest that I had achieved so far and the gain here is nearby around 89% but this method is quite slow as it computes all the nearest neighbors the SVM has a decent accuracy of about 94% the cart has an accuracy of 86% so the cart and the knife blade are little conventional methods so that's why the accuracy are little bit low but it again depends upon data set to data set and here uh, and here uh, methods like neural network and random forest are giving much more greater accuracy now perceptron is also giving around 94.8 percent accuracy and the neural network is giving an accuracy of 99.25 percent or i would say 98.58 percent and this was achieved on a 20 epoch levels were reduced to 2 on the activity and no activity our neural network were able to get an accuracy of nearly 99.9 percent so right now i was predicting on the actual data set but when i reduced the number of classifications from 6 to 2 then my accuracy jumped up to 99.9 percent .9%, and this is all i had done so far i am open for your suggestions thank you